First play, Purdue-Michigan Big Ten Championship game. Purdue's going to start with double misdirection. A little throwback screen. Goes for a tackle for loss. So let's start with what's the intent of double misdirection. So for a defense, right, you're going to get action to the left, right? Zone action and the jet action. That's really going to make you step, right? Almost lunge to the right, to the defense's right, to defend that action. Well, then you get the boot off of it. And what's the defense's response? Well, their def the defensive response is to turn and haul ass to wherever you need to go. Whether it's man coverage, whether it's your zone drop, whether it's whatever else, you need to turn and haul ass. And track sprinters aren't as good at agility as athletes. And they become track stars when they turn and run, right? Their technique is no longer such that they can react to misdirection. So you get them lunging left with this action, then turning and running to the right to the boot action, and then throw back to them, right? And while they're turning and running, everybody's out of position because they're overreacting to the boot. Problem is twofold. Michigan doesn't overreact to the boot. One, because I think they have two tight ends to this side of the format, to the right side of their formation. None of them release, which I find odd. Right? One of these could release to the flat and really sell that kind of flood action to the defense. But because they don't see anybody release, and even the wide receiver here doesn't go across the field, he actually goes to the safety, no one really robots, no one really turns and runs, they stay put. The second problem is every screen to the outside needs a blocker responsible for the force defender. Michigan is in cover two, which means the force defender is this cornerback. and no one picks him up, right? This offensive lineman, this left tackle, I'm almost certain is responsible for the force defender. He's got to keep on going and find the cornerback. He turns and tries to seal the outside linebacker inside, and the cornerback blows up the play in the backfield. Someone, yes, has to turn back and seal inside, but someone's got to be responsible for the force defender. Purdue doesn't have somebody. All right, Purdue's going to go hurry up. This is a swing screen. So two screens to start. For Purdue, very Purdue-esque. I said, pre-game, Michigan has to be prepared for screens. Of course, they come out and throw two screens. This is a play we did see on film in the first half versus Illinois. It's just a simple swing screen to the running back. They pull a guard. Why do you pull a guard like it's single back power? Even though it's to the play, right? They pull a guard to the play. A lot of people would think, well, why aren't they pulling a guy away from the play, right? Make the linebackers flow. That's not actually what you're trying to do. What you're trying to do, one, Purdue runs a lot of same side gap schemes. They're going to run in this game. So that's not necessarily a problem. But two, you're trying to get these guys to collapse. Right? You're trying to get, because there's defenders here, you're trying to get them to collapse onto the single back power. Right? So you get a soft edge. He's going to down block on that defensive end. When this guy pulls around the horn, this guy's probably going to be part of the fit or want to be part of the run fit. And so you're trying to get them to trigger down with that puller. And worse comes to worse, this puller wraps around the horn and he seals the guy inside. So you don't lose anything from it. You just hope to get a response from the defense. Unfortunately for Purdue, the nickel is not in the fit at all. I apologize for the rewind, but the nickel does not crash down at all. He stays outside. This guy sets up so wide that he actually fights underneath it. The linebacker makes the play anyway. But that's the intent of the play for Purdue. Trying to get outside. This is the first one was a slow developing screen, more like a traditional screen, even though it went to the wide receiver. This one's a swing screen. So this one's a quick screen. So different pace to the screen game. Uh, but Michigan defends both obviously well prepared uh, to have to defend screen in this game versus Purdue. All right, weird personnel from Purdue is they go 0-2 personnel. So zero running backs, two tight ends, three wide receivers. What am I thinking out of this? Let's first run the play. A couple verticals and then a delayed mesh from the tight ends ends up in a sack versus cover three from Michigan. What am I thinking if I'm a defensive coordinator? One, I'm thinking I don't think Michigan's seen this personnel group this year. Though it wouldn't surprise me if Purdue out of all teams has run it a few times this year. But I'm thinking, especially if the running if the quarterback's under center, I'm thinking jet sweep, right? You can get two tight ends, really extend the edge. 
things of that nature. But third and 14 is not really a great down to do that. The other thing I'm thinking as a defensive coordinator is one of these wide receivers is going to line up in the backfield. They're going to run something like an angle route, a wheel route, a rail route, something like that to try to get a matchup against a linebacker one-on-one. -on -one, right? So you're trying to sneak a wide receiver into that position, a little better athlete, a little better route runner, and you can get them in space on a linebacker. And what you do as a defensive coordinator is you probably respond to your base look, which for Michigan happens to be cover three. And they drop back in cover three and come up with the sack. So what Purdue's trying to do, I think, here is basically they're going to run this comeback route in the slot. Probably can convert to a dig depending on the coverage. That's option number one. Option number two is going to be the delayed underneath to delayed opposite. One, two, three. And you get the chips with the tight ends. Chips with tight ends, a lot of times offensive tackles prefer to chips by running backs. Why? Because a lot of times the tackle is going to end up engaged or almost engaged with a defender by the time a running back chip comes. And it actually will just put the tackle out of position. So tight ends are nice because they can engage first, just slow down kind of the speed rush or bull rush and pass them on to the tackle. Unfortunately... And this side, the tight end really doesn't get anything. This side, the tight end does a little bit more, but the tackle's a little slow out of the stance. Interior pressure gets home. You get an interior win with a little bull rush there, just kind of pushes through his body. Interior rush pushes him through the, to the outside man, and he can't really make it to even to number two in his progression because they're so delayed coming out, and it ends up in a sack. Second and 11. Michigan motions in the tight end, just a standard inside zone play. But what you're going to see here is something that Purdue did a lot. They did a lot to stem the front. You're going to see a generic over front to the field to start. They motion in the tight end, and they stem to under, right? He goes into the A gap. He goes into the C gap inside the tight end, and it messes with Michigan's blocking assignments, right? When it's an over front, everything's easy. Center, left guard, through the A-gap to the front side linebacker. Right tackle, right guard, through the backside three-tech to the backside linebacker. He takes care of the defensive end, you're golden. They stem inside, suddenly Michigan's uncomfortable with how to block it. Right, so center and left guard still go through him to the front side. That's fine. But then the right guard is solo on the A-gap, and he gets no help. No overtake from the right tackle. Right tackle tries to slip straight out. And one thing that when I watched film of Purdue linebackers, they were pretty patient. And then they kind of, they kind of shuffled and they kind of fit, and it was fine. Here, he triggers. Look at him shuffle and trigger. This linebacker, this second play in a row, trigger, boom. Meet that offensive lineman, force the cutback. So I didn't see that on film, but that's a nice job by the linebacker. But because the guard is stuck here on the first level, and there's no double, so they're not reading the linebacker, right? You can't read the linebacker's reaction if you don't start in the combo block. The tackle goes straight out to him. So when he triggers, there's really no one there. The guard has to make a decision. Do I leave the, tight, the defense tackle or do I block the free hitter? And he decides to do the smart play, which is the guy that's charging. Now, one thing that a young running back, he probably has to do this because of that linebacker plug in that hole. But you have to understand, once that soft edge happens... Someone, one of these two, either the safety or the nickel, is fitting off the edge, right? That's how they're getting gapped out. And so when you bounce back, you got to expect that player there. Here he probably has to do it anyway, so I'm not saying it's a poor read. But I anticipate even if that wasn't the case, that with that linebacker plugging, he probably would have tried to cut it back instead of staying front side. Anyway, All right, Michigan ran this more in 2021, but still run it a lot. Levels. Pick up the first down with the run after catch. People get so angry about not throwing past the sticks on third down, and it drives me nuts. So what's Michigan doing? He's going to run standard a little dig, but he sees the poach coverage, so it turns into a little like 12-yard comeback route because right? you don't just want to run into the dig. So he identifies the weak safety playing poach and triple, so that means versus a vertical, right, he's got coverage. If this guy gains depth, you're going to throw the under. And if he doesn't gain depth, you're going to throw the comeback. Simple read for the quarterback. If there's pressure, he gets it out in time, right? So it's just one on the dig, two on the under or drive, three on the check down. You run off coverage, right? These guys both on the outside are ready to block. 
They're not really part of the progression. They're running off coverage, play side. Run off the nickel, run off the cornerback, right? So some, something vertical, run off the nickel, run off the cornerback, probably like a post wheel. You might alert to it. Run off these three guys, occupy this guy with the tight end, run underneath it, you're good, right? And if they, if they stay put, fine. I'm just going to hit the dig coming back the other way. So it's one of the best third and medium plays, I think, that's out there. Um, Michigan, in 2021 especially, they weren't great at running it. They ran it a lot. They were great at hitting this kind of drive route, this under route. Terrible at hitting the dig route. This year, they've expanded their ability to kind of hit that dig route a little bit more, and it makes the play a lot more lethal. Um, but you find it in most playbooks. It's an NFL favorite, um, but it was in Gaddis's playbook, certainly, um, and it's carried over. Uh, it's always been in Harbaugh's playbook, too. Um, but it's a it's a great concept. Oh, look at he little fist bump. All right. All right. Weak side flood off hard play action. I, I love this concept uh, off of hard play action um, as a kind of overload. So weak side flood because you're going to hit number two in the depth like 80% of the time. This ends up in incompletion. It's such a great concept, and let me explain why. So you get a lot of duo out of this look here. They're kind of threatening weak side zone, which is fine. The weak side zone allows him to leak out to the flat. He's just going to run off coverage. They get cover three. Condensed formation gets him across the field fast. And so if these linebackers at all respond to the play action, there is no way for them to keep up with the fastest receiver on Michigan and get the depth and the width. Right, because he's condensed, so he just runs boom right across the field. Look how fast he's across the field, and there is no way for the linebacker to get the depth or width needed to cover three to this side of the formation. Right, because someone's got to pick the running back up out of the back outfield. So if he gains depth, you're just going to dump it down to the running back who's going to turn and run for a big game. And it, it's just such a wonderful play design. Most teams have it, some sort of weak side zone. But off this under center, hard play action, you really suck up those linebackers, right? A formation they run a lot of duo out of. They're going to run duo later in this game out of those extended surfaces. Ends up in incompletion, uh, low pass, but a great concept. So Michigan's throwing out some of my favorites here. Levels, uh, hard play action, weak side flood. If they come back and run Yankee, I'm going to have myself a night, go get myself a beer and have myself a night. This isn't any sort of thing to write home about. Counter OT with a flat or angle or arrow or slide RPO, whatever you want to call it. And I'm feeling like an idiot. This is why I'm really posting this. I spent the whole first half complaining. Not strongly because I only scouted one game, but... Mostly complaining internally. Why aren't they running pin and pull and counter OT? Purdue had trouble fitting it in the game I watched. Why aren't they running it? First two run plays for pin and pull and counter OT. Spent the whole half complaining they didn't run it. Wasn't really paying attention, I guess. Had other things to do. Um, it's why you can't take live analysis to heart all the time though. Uh, just to always make sure with live analysis you're taking it with a grain of salt, right? Your People can't process everything on the field at one time. It, it's too hard. You, you just can't do it. So you get better at it um, the more you coach and you, the more you know where to take your eyes uh, and how you can see things kind of morph in the patterns post-snap. So you can, you can see it better the more film you watch, but you're certainly never perfect. It's a nice little four-yard gain, right? Counter OT. What are they doing? So down blocks. Right, it's going to down block combo tray block through that defensive end to the backside linebacker. Down block, back block, kick with the guard, wrap to the front side with the tackle. You get the free hitter as the cornerback. That's okay. Michigan was more than happy to put running back on cornerback in this game. Get a nice little four or five, six-yard gain out of this uh, pretty regularly. And you're back in business. So not a bad play to run. Gets you in second to five. But I was complaining all half. Why are they running it? First two plays. Pin and pull. Counter OT. All right.
If I'm not mistaken, Michigan ran this exact play versus Iowa last year in the Big Ten Championship game. So that's interesting. With a little eye candy, I should say. It's not open. It's a touchdown, though. So they give it a little eye candy with the orbit motion, right? So a little hard uh, run action with the orbit motion, trying to get guys flying up, defend all this grass to the space. So, right, this is using space to your advantage with the condensed formation. What do I mean by that? Well, you get a fast player working to space. What's the defense's response to that? We better get numbers over there. Boom, boom, boom. We better fly over there. Because he's fast and he's going to all this grass. So they over-rotate to it. That's the tendency. Purdue doesn't. Purdue does a good job. Off of that play action, you're running the wheel with the fullback and the post. So usually, you know, if this guy can win leverage on this outside cornerback, bam, hammer that post. Here they're in cover three, so you end up with the cornerback and the free safety. The cornerback passes the post off to the free safety, comes back to double the wheel route, which you think you have a matchup advantage, right? You think you have this matchup advantage because he's supposed to trigger to the run action. Pretty good coverage, too, by the linebacker. Now, one thing I'm going to complain about with Michigan. First, they don't run enough play action. But they don't really block play action. Hard play action. Um, and I think I know why. Uh, but it does leave the play action pass susceptible to linebackers reading high hats. And so you're going to see everybody just drop into pass sets. Right? They're hard setting. Hard set means taking shallow angles. So they're not dropping back. Right? They're not gaining depth at the stack. But all of them are definitely high hats. They're not coming off the ball. They're not, it's not feel like I'm running the ball. You know, I'm angry. I'm pounding you in the face. They're hard set and pass. So high hat, they know to go and pass. They cover it well, but it's a touch. So here's a situation. Linebacker makes a nice play and then doesn't. Spacing concept from Purdue. What's the spacing concept? So he's going to run just right over the center. Uh, he is going to run just a little square in at about seven. He runs to the flat, so it's a modified spacing, but it's the same idea. You're getting at three different spots to one side of the field. And the linebacker sees it developing quickly, right? He runs this little stop route. He sees the linebacker coming out the flat. And so he's thinking maybe a hitch here. And his eyes stay on the quarterback the whole time. But he's running towards the play. And here's the problem. You know, there's a saying, you can look somewhere or you can run somewhere. You can't look away from where you're running. And obviously you can, but this is why you don't. Because at some point, you need to look and find the receiver. Where am I going? Now, the benefit of spot drop zones, which Michigan runs a lot, is you keep eyes back to the quarterback. That's the benefit of it. And see, he's, his eyes are on the quarterback, so he thinks, I know where I'm running to. But at some point, you need to know where the guy receiving the ball is. And see, he thinks he's getting like a pick on a little dig route or something, or a comeback or something like that. Never finds the receiver. So at some point, yes, eyes back to the quarterback, that's fine, but you got to peek. You got to peek and find the receiver. Where am I going? Then I can make the play. So it's a, like, like I said, so this is where it comes hard grading, right? Because the linebacker makes a really nice play. This is a great job reading the quarterback's eyes and breaking on his eyes. It's a great job. Just got to peek and find it. Then a nice break tackle, get a first down, and this gets Purdue going, right? Without this, it's third and long, backed up to the end zone. They just had a three and out. This is a huge play for Purdue. I can't overstress that. All right, Purdue running the quick game hits here. So spacing followed by snag. Snag, an easy read, right? Especially if you know you're getting a lot of cover three, cover two. That's what Michigan likes to do, a lot of zone, spot zone. So not a great man beater, but Michigan doesn't play a lot of man, right? So this is a zone beater. So what happens? Cover two, you're probably going to alert this corner route, right? And they might have what they call a cop route on. 
Cap route is corner or post, so he could read the safety. If the safety's cheating to the corner, he could run a post. But usually it's a it's a post. And usually it's just called a post. Usually it's not a read. So first tight end runs a post. He runs a little snag route, which is kind of an in-breaking hitch at about five, six yards. And then the running back goes to the flat. So cover two, you're probably going to go corner to flat. Cover three, if he bails, right? So here's your read. If he bails, then you're just going to read snag to flat. Just a triangle read. Linebacker can't defend both. And so linebacker gets caught up on the snag right there. Flat's open. One of the standard quick game concepts that exists in football. Still works, right? It's been working for 40 years. Why stop now? We call it Z-snag. Z receiver off the line of scrimmage. Z-snag. Nice concept. All right, this is something to look for because TCU is going to run this. I'm going to run this now. Quarterback reads it right, but he reads it late. Reads it right, but reads it late. Insert, so it's just a zone, so they lock on the backside. He'll insert into the mic. This is your read, little bang route, glance route, whatever the heck you want to call it. I don't care. And it's open. Here's your read. But quarterback sees him hold water, right? Hold water. Safety. This is three safety look now. Or no, two safety. But the safety's down playing linebacker depth. Holds water for a second. Fits the run. Quarterback starts seeing him, but sees it late. Him starting to fit down. He wants to pull, throw this little glance. Boom, there it is, open. Holds it in the belly a little long. Running back starts to clamp down. Running back's got to let the quarterback put it in there. Don't be squeezing that ball early. Got to let him put it in there. He'll give it to you. Don't worry. If you're supposed to run, he'll give it to you. Starts to squeeze. Bobbles the exchange. Ends up with a tackle for loss. It was there, though, that glance. Now, that cover three, right? He, that cover three corner can, bam, he can break on that route. Going to see it later. Cornerback break on a glance route. But it was there. So these quick game hits that I was telling you about, spacing, right back to it. It's a little bit deeper run spacing versus cover two. So usually, historically, let's say, spacing would run a little hitch, maybe five, six yards. Here they run it, boom, about nine yards. So a little bit deeper, um, which is good in modern football because quarterbacks aren't so used to these heavily timed plays, right? We don't do a lot of three-step drop on that third step, bang, you're throwing the ball. It doesn't really exist too much in football anymore. So you run it a little deeper, let the quarterback read it, let the quarterback throw it. And what they're getting is they're getting a lot of cover three from Michigan and a lot of cover two. So cover two, you know, I said with the snag, how it breaks down with spacing, right? You're just going to pick on the flat defender. Flat defender cheats to the, to the swing. You're going to throw the hitch. That's why it used to be a hitch, right? Right inside of them. Now it's run a little bit deeper. Linebackers are confused. Linebackers don't really know what the heck they're doing here. Watch, running into each other. I think he's supposed to get over on the numbers. So I think it's just a bust, but this kind of in-breaking route from the tight end pulls him inside. All right, they got three defenders to that side for it, right? So he's going to play this route right here, but he gets he's cheating down on that tight end route. He's got to gain width. It's cover two. That's right where the ball goes, right in front of the safety. Cover two. Spacing concept. So they're playing the quick game hits. Spacing concept again from Purdue. Here's the end zone look. It's going to give you a feel for what the back end is doing. This is robber two. So again, they're playing the quick game hits as I call them. What's the quick game hits? Spacing, snag, spot, those kind of, those kind of concepts. So this is spacing now. So the tight end is going to run this kind of center route over the middle. He's going to run... Kind of a nine yard comeback it used to be like a six yard hitch when it was really you know under center three step drop on that third step bang you hit you make your read you make your throw a lot of teams they run it a little bit deeper now to let the quarterback make the read it doesn't have to be as timing oriented then this running back goes in the flat 
And usually what you're going to end up doing is picking on whoever the flat defender is. So versus cover two, it's going to be the cornerback. Versus cover three, it's going to be a safety or a linebacker going out to the flat. Michigan's in robber two, and they're confused. He's going inside for some reason. He's supposed to be gaining depth, deep half. You're going to see him work to the middle, him work over the top. A unique coverage for him might even be cover three double cloud but the safety clearly is not on the same page right here because he runs into the linebacker both going on the tight end picks him off he's trying to go over the top a little bit so that comeback route that's open so some confusion on the back end i think it's robert two could be a version of cover three but michigan doesn't run much cover three with both cornerbacks up i don't think they have run it this year um, but there's clearly some confusion happening on that side of the field, and Purdue converts. So they ran the throwback. Now they're going to go with a flood concept, actually. Really a smash type play. China, if you want to call it that. Um, and I don't know if this is a route conversion, meaning he's reading the coverage, or if it's actually a call. But I'm going to tell you what happens to Michigan here. You get this jet action, he rolls to the flat. Off of that jet action, the quarterback rolls right. One of the things that defenses are most prepared to defend with rollouts is kind of flood plays, right? And so the safety is going to start cheating the corner out. He's trying to cap the corner out. What does cap mean? The direction of the route. So here's the corner route. He's going to try to get over top of it and cheat it. Cap it, right? You're going to put it. Cap on top of the route. And so he gets with, 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 with. He's way outside of it. And instead of running that corner out, he's just going to turn in. Find the soft spot. So I don't know, again, if it's a call that they're calling it because Michigan runs a lot of cover two. Or if this is a route conversion. If I had to guess, it's probably a route conversion um, because he's going to run then the late deep over. That gives you your kind of weak side triangle, right? So kind of deep corner. Delayed over, flat. But doing this puts a lot of stress on the quarterback, right? You got to roll. You got to stop, set up, and make that throw and make sure someone's not running underneath it as you're rolling. It can be very dangerous, right? Because coverage is flowing that way. Now, remember, they threw the throwback first play of the game, so coverage isn't rolling that way as hard. But this safety's trying to cap that corner out. I can guarantee it. Look how much width he has. And on the catch... Look where he's coming from. Look how deep he's coming from, from the outside. So the playing off that tendency, settling underneath the safety, cover two, and attacking those seams. Oh, it's the wing T coaches kind of day. Little hand back, long trap, wing counter. Straight out of the wing T playbook. Love it with the little motion, stop motion here. So you motion him in the wing. Look at the little extra depth he gets. I love the, I love the little cheating, right? You cheat your alignment. Fake the sweep to the left, little hand back, counter to the wing. Guard pulls, long trap on the defensive end. Look at that running lane. Oh, it's glorious. This is what football's all about. Uh, all what football is all about. Look at the linebackers reacting to the sweep. Not too much, but they're stepping up. And I got to point this out. I got to point this out. Tight end and a nasty alignment. Why a nasty? What's a nasty alignment? So you're about one, two yards off the, off the tackle instead of right next to him. What does that do? It widens this end for the trap, and it gives the tight end an angle to the front side linebacker. And watch him get that seal right on the front side linebacker. Boom. Everybody can love the wing counter. Nobody has to love this tackling. It is not pretty. Just give them the touchdown. They don't, but they should.